the american perceptor by caleb bingham eighteen eleven this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by melvin lee self-interest dialogue between two neighbors derby good morning neighbor scrapewell i have half a dozen miles to ride to-day and should be extremely obliged if you would lend me your gray mare scrapewell i should be happy friend derby to oblige you but am under a necessity of going immediately to the mill with three bags of corn my wife wants the meal this very morning derby then she must want it still for i can assure you the mill does not go to-day i heard the miller tell will davis that the water was too low scrapewell you don't say so that is quite unlucky for in that case i shall be obliged to gallop off to town for the meal my wife would comb my head for me if i should neglect it derby i can save you this journey i have a plenty of meal at home and will lend your wife as much as she wants scrapewell ah neighbor derby i am sure your meal will never suit my wife you can't conceive how whimsical she is derby if she were ten times more whimsical than she is i am certain she would like it for you sold it to me yourself and you assured me it was the best you ever had scrapewell yes yes that's true indeed i always have the best of everything you know neighbor derby that no one is more ready to oblige than i am but i must tell you the mare this morning refused to eat hay and truly i am afraid she will not carry you derby oh never fear i will feed her well with oats on the road scrapewell oats neighbor oats are very dear derby they are so indeed but no matter of that when i have a good job in view i never stand for trifles scrapewell it is very slippery and i am really afraid she will fall and break your neck derby give yourself no uneasiness about that the mare is certainly sure-footed and besides you were just now talking yourself of galloping her to town scrapewell well then to tell you the plain truth though i wish to oblige you with all my heart my saddle is torn quite in pieces and i have just sent my bridle to be mended derby luckily i have both a bridle and a saddle hanging up at home scrapewell ah that may be but i am sure your saddle will never fit my mare derby well then i'll borrow neighbor clodpoles scrapewell clodpoles his will no more fit than yours does derby at the worst then i'll go to my friend squire jones he has half a score of them and i am sure he will lend me one that will fit her scrapewell you know friend derby that no one is more willing to oblige his neighbor than i am i do assure you the beast should be at your service with all my heart but she has not been curried i believe for three weeks past her foretop and mane want combing and cutting very much if any one should see her in her present plight it would ruin the sale of her derby oh a horse is soon curried and my son sand shall dispatch her at once scrapewell yes very likely but i this moment recollect the creature has no shoes on derby well is there not a blacksmith hard by scrapewell what that tinker of a dobson i would not trust such a bungler to shoe a goat no no none but uncle tom thumper is capable of shoeing my mare derby as good luck will have it then i shall pass right by his door scrapewell calling to his son timothy timothy here's neighbor derby who wants the loan of the gray mare to ride to town to-day you know the skin has rubbed off her back last week a hand's breadth or more he gives tim a wink however i believe she is well enough by this time you know tim how ready i am to oblige my neighbors and indeed we ought to do all the good we can in this world we must certainly let neighbor derby have her if she will possibly answer his purpose yes yes i see plainly by tim's countenance neighbor derby that he's disposed to oblige you i would not have refused you the mare for the worth of her if i had i should have expected you would have refused me in your turn none of my neighbors can accuse me of being backward in doing them a kindness 
Come, Timothy, what do you say? Tim, what do I say, father? Why, I say, sir, that I am no less ready than you are to do a neighborly kindness. But the mare is by no means capable of performing the journey. About a hand's breadth, did you say, sir? Why, the skin is torn from the poor creature's back of the bigness of your great-brimmed hat. And besides, I have promised her, as soon as she is able to travel, to Ned Saunders to carry a load of apples to the market. Scrapewell, do you hear that, neighbor? I am very sorry matters turn out thus. I would not have disobliged you for the price of two such mares. But believe me, neighbor Derby, I am really sorry for your sake that matters turn out thus. Derby, and I as much as yours, neighbor Scrapewell, for to tell you the truth, I received a letter this morning from Mr. Griffin, who tells me, if I will be in town this day, he will give me the refusal of all that lot of timber which he is about cutting down upon the back of Cobble Hill, and I intended you should have shared half of it, which would have been not less than fifty dollars in your pocket. But, Scrapewell, fifty dollars, did you say? Derby. Ah, truly did I. But as your mare is out of order, I'll go and see if I can get old Rowan, the blacksmith's horse. Scrapewell. Old Rowan? My mare is at your service, neighbor. Here, Tim, tell Ned Saunders he can't have the mare. Neighbor Derby wants her, and I won't refuse so good a friend anything he asks for. Derby. But what are you to do for meal? Scrapewell. My wife can do without it this fortnight if you want the mare so long. Derby. But then your saddle is all in pieces. Scrapewell. Uh, oh, I meant the old one. I have bought a new one since, and you shall have the first use of it. Derby. And you would have me call at Thumper's and get her shod? Scrapewell. No, no. I had forgotten to tell you that I let neighbor Dobson shoe her last week by way of trial, and to do him justice, I must own he shoes extremely well. Derby. But if the poor creature has lost so much skin off her back, Scrapewell, pooh, pooh, that is just one of our Tim's large stories. I do assure you, it was not at first bigger than my thumbnail, and I am certain it has not grown any sense. Derby, at least, however, let her have something she will eat, since she refuses hay. Scrapewell, she did indeed refuse hay this morning, but the only reason was that she was crammed full of oats. You have nothing to fear, neighbor. The mare is in perfect trim, and she will skim you over the ground like a bird. I wish you a good journey, and a profitable job. End of Self-Interest Dialogue Between Two Neighbors by Caleb Bingham